Okay, so we've created a track plan. You've created signals. We've created turnouts. So if you want to click on a turnout now, that turnout would change. And that one, that changes. Signals, if you click on the signal head, it changes. Did you see? I don't know if you did see that. If that one's green, and I change that one to, you can, you can choose the aspects yourself as well. This is just manual operation. Okay, so that's how you would change them manually. So we've done all that. Uh, next thing to do is to create locos. So edit locomotives. So here we got the loco editor. Again, you press new, same as when we wrote the interface. Let's call this a class 68. I don't know why, it's just one in front of me. Um, you need to know to measure that loco. So this is quite important. This is actually very important. I'm just gonna come into shop. Here's my loco, my ruler. Buffer to buffer is 27 centimeters. So we need to put in 27 centimeters into the length of that loco. We then need to tell it the decoder type. Now, DCC is just one protocol of digital control. A lot of people don't know this, but DCC isn't the only thing out there for controlling your trains. Um, but generally in the UK, that's what we tend to use. So you can choose, don't use 14, that's a historic thing. It's just there because of older locos. So we in the UK use 28 generally or 128. It says 126, I'm not going to go into the reasons for that today, but look it up if you want to know about it, but that's 128. Um, I'm going to choose 28. It needs to know the address of the decoder. For our evaluation, it is 14. Some of you are wondering why it's got a second address here. We'll say you had two decoders in the loco because you run out of functions to drive something and you wanted to have a second loco decoder in there to drive in fans or light functions or whatever else, that's where you would put the address for the second decoder. Images. So you can add an image to your loco. So if you don't have an image, you can find an image from the internet or take a picture yourself. So, I'll go to images, see what I can find. Huh. I'll put Clinton, not Chilton. <laughs> CH, Chilton Railway, there we go. There we go, so you find a picture that suits your needs, whatever you want. Uh, I want a bit too over the top, really. Uh, there we go, let's choose that. So if I go right click and save images, now, I want to put this in the iTrain file. Uh, not that one. Uh, SPC, C drive, users, DCC, iTrain, images, locos. I've created a GB file myself. So in here, I can put all my images of my locos. That's 68. Save it in there. Okay. Go back to iTrain. And then if we go find, and we go to locos, hopefully it's in the file. There it is. I can choose it. Press OK. And now I've added an image of that loco to uh, the database. You can create your own images, that's probably the best thing to do, but we'll find one like I have. Speeds, you will need to do this. You don't just guess it and put it in. You have to go onto the next uh, part of the course and watch how you do speed calibrations. That's very important. Functions, if it's a sound loco, 
Oh, off the loco's got lights. This one is not a sound loco, so we can just give it lights. Make sure you're consistent with the images you use for all of your locos in the database, because later on, these are used to activate things to happen automatically within iTrain. It uses the image, not the function number. So if it did have sound, you could find in the list. Uh, I think it's got engine sound somewhere. There we go, engine sound. And then that would be engine. You can overwrite these descriptions with your own um, to suit your needs. Well, this one hasn't got sound, so I'm going to get rid of that. Configuration. This is if you've got anything above iTrain standard and you want to do decoder programming. DCC default, so we could read back all of the CVs for that loco. Options. Don't touch acceleration rate at the moment. Occupancy offset is what we're interested in. So this is very important. This is connected to the length of the loco. So some locos don't have wheel pickups on every wheel. Now what we want to do is know the length from the front of the loco to the first electrical contact. Now on this loco, this does have um, this does have uh, wheel pickups on every wheel. So from the buffer to the center of the wheel, which on this one is three and a half centimetres. This will be the same on both ends. If it was a steam loco and it had a tender, it may not have any wheel pickups on that end. So you need to measure from the back of the loco to the first electrical wheel pickup in. So in here, you would put in that measurement and it might be seven, 15 centimetres, whatever it might be, from the back of the loco into the first electrical wheel pickup, from the front of the loco, from the front to the first electrical pickup. So we need to fill that in. Okay, so we've put in the length of the occupancy offset. Like I say, on this loco, it's the same both ways. That's not a problem. Reaction delay, we'll talk about this later, but don't touch that until after you've done the speed calibration. Um, period here, this is a maintenance thing. So if it was a diesel loco, you could put in the amount of hours of fuel this loco will run for before it needs to fill up. And then you can automatically set an action that sends it back to the diesel depot to fill up with fuel. Maintenance, again, it can use that and say, when you've an hour away, please come back. And it would automatically, you could do that. Permissions, in here you can choose a block where the train is not allowed to go, for example or only access to go. You can choose how you define that um, and if you want to use it at this stage. If you did it in here, it would be specific to the loco. Later on, you can do this kind of thing for the trains as well. So I'm just gonna remove that for now. And again, you can put some comments here just to help you, something about the loco, what decoder you put in it or whatever you so wish. So hit apply. It then creates the loco on the left here and we can then close local editor. Now you'll notice, this is iTrain 5 we've got here, it now says this other locomotives. So if I just click on the black dot, there we go. So our first loco is in the database. Now the reason it's showing it like this and the drop down is because we've never put it to the layout yet. As soon as we put this loco to the layout, so if I drag the image, to a block and let go, it's now changed on the left hand side. So now you see it doesn't say other locos, it's automatically created it into a train because you, we've put it on the layout. So it shows you the name. If you drag it, you see the image. And if I drag the image to the throttle over here, we now can see that loco in the throttle. Now, just talk about this throttle quickly. This is the train. There's a tab for train, locomotive, and wagon. At the moment, there's no wagons connected to this train, so there's no wagons in here, and we haven't created any wagons. That would be in a higher version of iTrain. Uh, course, from us, we can talk about how you create trains. It won't be in this basic one. So that's how you create your loco. All ready to, well, 